You're listening to the Brilliant Breakthroughs Podcast with your host, Maggie Magan. Hi, small business owners. Welcome to the Brilliant Breakthroughs Podcast, where we focus on creating brilliant breakthroughs for the small business owner. FYI, this is also the name of the number one best-selling business book series for small business. It's titled Brilliant Breakthroughs for the Small Business Owner, Fresh Perspectives on Profitability, People, Productivity, and Finding Peace in Your Business. And you can get a digital copy or paperback by going to Amazon. And just so you know, the book that we're referencing today is volume two in the series, and this is the one with the emerald green cover. Today's conversation is with a number one bestselling business author from the 2018 book, Susan White. And hi, rock stars. My name is Maggie Mongan. I'm a number one bestselling business author and the creator of this number one bestselling Brilliant Breakthroughs annual business book series. And... What I do for a living is I'm a master business coach and trainer at Brilliant Breakthroughs, Inc., where we simply are guiding and simplifying your business brilliance. That's the game I play. But let's shift to what really matters today, and that's Susan White. Welcome and congratulations, Susan, on securing your second number one best-selling business author status. Thank you, Maggie. That's pretty amazing. How does it feel to be a two-timer? <laughs> it, it feels great. Yeah, it feels really great. Yeah, this is probably the only time two-timer is, is something positive, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, everyone, Susan's chapter is the eighth one in the second volume, and it is titled, Are You Willing to Be Successful? And Susan, you covered a lot of ground in your chapter about willingness. And one of the things that you have done is you've been, uh, for the last session or two, you, you went ahead and shared with us a really great book called The Act of Will. Would you like to share a little bit more about that? Yes, I would. The author of that book is a man by the name of Roberto Asagioli. And the title, again, is The Act of Will. And one of the reasons I'm so intrigued with this book is that willingness is just a fascinating concept to me. That's one of the reasons I chose to write about it in my um, chapter. And today I'd like to actually discuss transpersonal will because there are four different levels of will. We talked about them the last time I did a podcast, but I think a quick review is in order, don't you, Maggie? Oh, I I think so. And I remember the first one was about strength. Right, the strong will. I always like to think about that as willpower. Um, It would be uh, tantamount to being on a diet and wanting to eat something, but just not eating it because you're on a diet. That's the strong will. Okay, good. That's easy. We can all relate to that. The second one is the skillful will, and that is going ahead and accomplishing something with using the least possible expenditure of energy. For example, um, using a map would be a a good example of that. It requires very little will to use a map, whereas if you were going to attempt to find your way somewhere without a map, well, that would be quite a bit more challenging. So the skillful will. Okay, that again, that one makes sense. And then the good will. That has a humanitarian component to it. And the good will is, well, exactly what it says. It's, it's any kind of a notion of using a natural gift to the utmost and doing something of goodness that would be universally accepted and recognized. 
So the goodwill, I would think about that as um, some type of humanitarian effort. For example, my church is doing a uh, cleanup in a few weeks, a community cleanup where they're helping people to do yard cleanup work and they're cleaning up some local parks and that sort of thing. And that's an example of the goodwill. Okay. And finally, the transpersonal will, which is my favorite and aligns itself, interestingly enough, to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Abraham Maslow was a, uh, for those of you who don't know, was a psychologist who created a hierarchy of needs. And the first of those five needs that he created was uh, a need for the basics, food, water, shelter. The second was safety. The third was belonging or having some kind of an intimate, meaningful relationship. The fourth was esteem, to be able to feel good about yourself and who you are. And the fifth was self-actualization actually realizing your fullest potential possible. And that's what transpersonal will is all about. Transpersonal will is a higher need of willingness. And what's interesting is um, I'm, I'm on this path of self-evolution myself, and I can see where Transpersonal will is something that I enact frequently, and I'm going to suggest that most entrepreneurial small business owners are also on a quest using transpersonal will, that highest level of will. Okay, so now, now you get to share more. Yes, and I, I love this stuff. The thing I really like about this book is that Asagioli uses so much information from other well-known people and really brilliant people, much more brilliant than I am. <laughs> um, but but I, I love that he incorporates all this wisdom of others into his work. Uh, he talks a little bit about a higher level and normalcy and quotes one of my favorite people in the world, Carl Jung. And Carl Jung said, to be normal is a splendid ideal for the unsuccessful. For all those who have yet found an adaptation, but for people who have far more ability than the average, for whom it was never hard to gain successes and to accomplish their share of the world's work, for them, restriction to the normal signifies unbearable boredom, infernal sterility, and hopelessness. As a consequence, there are many people who become neurotic because they are only normal, as there are people who are neurotic because they cannot become normal. Isn't that a great piece? Oh, I absolutely love it. Isn't it great? And, and that's what transpersonal uh, will is all about. It's elevating yourself to the highest level of willingness. Interestingly enough, this transcendent piece of willingness typically comes out of boredom or at a crisis point. For example, I didn't start my own business until I actually lost a position as a counselor, and it was a crisis mode for me having lost a position, and I made a decision that nobody was ever going to terminate me again. And that's how I actually began my own practice about 12 years ago. 
And that's the path that many people who are on a transpersonal level of willingness follow. Isn't that fascinating? It is. So yours was a crisis point that moved you into your business that you've been running for a dozen years. So how, right. does, how does the boredom um, the boredom come across? Because you said that it comes out of boredom or cr a crisis point. Well, think about somebody who gets up every morning and goes to work at a nine to five job and uses the strong will to get there, knowing that their paycheck is attached to showing up at work and doing this job that they may consider mundane or may consider to be less than their ideal for living their own personal lives. Think about that. Okay, and, and that we see a lot of time with people leaving their old way of, of generating income and launching a new business idea. Exactly. Okay. You know, and that's fascinating because I think that's one that we, we see and we say, oh, okay, and we can identify with it. Whereas the crisis point approach, if we don't know that that's why somebody's doing what they're doing, we don't notice it as such. Right. Asagioli writes about how most people are striving to find a sense of meaningfulness in their lives. He, he shares a, um, a, an excerpt from Tolstoy's the confession okay it talks about how tolstoy had written um he was very content with his life he he had a a good wife he had a a nice home and that he was he was um just moving quite along right along in life and he was he was uh restless there was a restlessness about him and he couldn't quite put his finger on it and that that evolved into um, him wanting to stretch himself and exert himself. So that's an example of boredom as well. We can have a really great life. We can be moving right along in our lives and we can um, think that we've got things really good, but then the mundane sets in the nine to five mundane getting up doing the same thing day in day out not challenging ourselves fully and being subject to somebody else's thoughts feelings and opinions about what we're doing and how we're doing it one of the groups of people that i frequently hear this from is teachers oh okay Right now in the teaching profession, there's such a focus on, on testing that many teachers don't get to follow their passion and actually teach. Yes, yes. I've heard that from teachers as well. They're held under a microscope and, and, and aligned to whatever the grades are in terms of the testing that they're giving out to their students. And the medical profession is very similar with patients grading and how they're being reimbursed through the insurance companies now. So there's right. some, some big shifts occurring. Okay, so right. this is a great awareness. It is. And especially since um, the, the quest for meaningfulness is so great among people, it's especially interesting to think that our will is attached to that. There's another quote by Albert Einstein, and it has to do with meaningfulness. And that is, the man who regards his life as meaningless is not merely unhappy, but hardly fit to live. That sounds harsh, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, that's a biggie. That's, yeah, Albert that's, Einstein wrote that. Yeah, right between and, the eyes. Holy cow. 
So as long as we are dissatisfied with some of the things that are going on with our lives, we actually have the ability to, to transcend and rise above those things and to um, put ourselves into a position where we can elevate ourselves. Okay, now that makes sense to me that that transcend is the key part of transpersonal will, the fourth will you mentioned, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So Susan, this this is huge. And I love the recap of what we talked about before with the four aspects, but now taking in another layer, is there something that you want to add before I ask the big question that I'm going to ask you about how the heck, this is really cool stuff, but how the heck does it relate to your chapter that you wrote? You know what? It's fascinating because this was not my intention when I started out, but each person that I interviewed, and I interviewed three, unfortunately, I didn't have an opportunity to interview more than that. I wish I could have and or would have done that. However, the three that I interviewed all have a transpersonal level of willingness. Listen to this, Maggie. This is fascinating. Okay. Kimberly Elaine, high performance coach, talks about success is the fruit of hope in action. And then she expounds on that by saying, success is defined by my conscious choice of showing up as my highest and best self and interacting with everyone around me in that same space so that I'm a positive contagion in the world. Talk about transpersonal will. Oh, that's playing big. No doubt there. It is definitely playing big. And that's Kimberly elevating herself to her highest possible level. Debbie Leone is another one. She's a fearless life coach and author of I Am Fearless, 12 Elements of Fearless Living. She talks about success as living a fulfilled life and living on purpose. She says that ultimately it comes down to really living your passion based on your God-given talents, dreams, and desires. Again, there's that transpersonal will. Right. It shows up again. And the third person I interviewed, Stacy Cott, owner of Stacy Cott Photography, she talks about the ebb and flow of success and how success never stays the same, but it continually elevates itself and redefines itself. So here's Stacy on a on a quest of her personal best. Okay, I hope our, our listeners are getting it right now because this is huge. It is. It is. Elevating to our personal best. Right. And that's what small business owners do. There's a whole different method to asagioli. That's always a mouthful for me to say. <laughs> Asagioli talks about different types of transcendence and how we transcend through love. We can transcend through action. We can transcend through beauty. And then finally, aligning itself with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we can transcend through self-realization. Got it. So this is some some uh, interesting stuff, isn't it? Well, I I love it. Um, I write in my business model. I say that um, business owners, whether they realize it or not, they're utilizing their business to self actualize. And, yes. And and that's why this. This is so in my wheelhouse that we can do this. And, and sometimes we're doing it very unconsciously of just playing the, the um, what would we say, playing the game of taking the higher road. 
Right. And what I find is so many people are actually doing it consciously. Yes. Yes. There's been what a shift. What excites me. Yeah. As people are evolving into their highest selves and doing this consciously. That's why willingness is such a big component of success. Yes, and I've seen the conscious, the deliberate way, as, as uh, Debbie Leone said, being deliberate about it, uh, something that's really happened like in the last 10 years for entrepreneurship. Mm. It's becoming much more noticeable in the last mm -hmm. 10 years that people are like, you know, let's step it up, everyone. So th this is huge. Love, action, beauty and self-realization. Right. Right. Those are the, the ways, and that's a whole other podcast, Maggie. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to ask you. <laughs> but I know whatever it is that you deliver next time, it's going to be wonderful, so we don't have to be concerned about that. <laughs> All right. So really what we're talking about is there's a different way of being. And if we're consciously approaching this way of willingness, it alters our approach to everything we do. It definitely does. Okay. So Susan, with you being um, a therapist, what are some of the challenges that you see people when they're business owners and you know how how do we you help them move through that uh riding their way through the ebbs and flows of business realizing that today's crisis is not tomorrow's outcome oh that's a great one can you repeat that Today's crisis is not tomorrow's outcome. Okay. Wow. Okay. I can see where that would be a hot one. Most definitely, because so frequently people will come in to see me and talk about um, their different levels of, of challenge that they're experiencing, and we explore different options and the viability of those different options. And out of that comes the realization that whatever challenge they're in right now, whatever crisis they're facing, it's temporary. It's not the ultimate end. Okay. Well, that makes sense. And I imagine that you would be a great sounding board for that. And then what, setting up um, some options, discussing options and then a plan for them to take action accordingly? Right, because not only am I a therapist, I'm a small business owner. You know, I think sometimes people forget that about therapists. Right, that, that this is actually, as well as a passion of mine, it's a business that supports myself and my family. Oh, so you, you have, the, the uh, it's not a luxury, the capability to go into a session with a client and speak to them from multiple angles as to what it is that's uh, creating heartburn for them. Right, right. Recently, there was a um, computer programmer, a systems analyst, I should say, who came to see me and talked about the corporate structure and it's been a long time since I've been in a corporate structure. But as he was talking about it, it came back to me pretty quickly. And I was able to align myself with him and have a pretty clear understanding of some of the challenges he was facing. Oh, and thank you for sharing that. Because I think sometimes we forget that a therapist may be the right therapist, of course. Um, may be a good person to speak to about our ebbs and flows of business and how to manage through them better. Right, right. Wow. Um, Susan, I'd love for us to talk more about this. Can we, can we hit pause? 
<laughs> Until next time. Until next time. And we have two more sessions with you. So um, you might be wanting to think a little bit about where you're going to take us next. You mean we're going to transcend? Oh, there, there. All right. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that might take on a whole new meeting considering it's Easter season, right? <laughs> it could. <laughs> oh my gosh, how fun. You're making this too fun and I want to stay and hang out, but I know our time is limited today. Unfortunately, it usually is. Right. Right. Before we wrap up, Susan, is there anything else that you would like to add in this part of the conversation? The Act of Will is a great book. If you have any interest in what I've spoken about so far, uh, Roberto Asagioli is the author. The Act of Will is the book, and it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating read. All right. Well, there you have it, everyone. If you're interested in what Susan's been saying in the last uh, couple episodes, please go back. And, and if you're curious which episodes Susan has done for the Green Book, that would be number 64, 69, and 75. Um, so I would like to say thank you, Susan. This is wonderful. Oh, thank you, Maggie. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, and this, this stuff really gets me going. So now I'm not going to be able to think about anything else for the rest of the day. <laughs> Which could be a good thing. Right. All right. Okay, well, listeners, this is how you can learn and engage more with number one bestselling author, Susan White. Start by reading chapter eight in the book, Brilliant Breakthroughs for the Small Business Owner. That's volume two with the green cover. and she has a gift for you that Susan was so kind. She put together an offer for you to accept. It's at the bottom of her author's page in the chapter. And she has some social media handles there for you to go ahead and connect with her as well. And I want you to know that the Susan we're referencing today is Susan White. We do have another author named Susan. So Susan White. And here's something that's really cool. You can even go to our app and download the app for free. It's Brilliant Biz Book, all one word, Brilliant Biz Book. Probably want to capitalize those Bs. And when you click into the app, you'll see that we have an option for you to ask our expert authors any question that you would like. So you can type in a question and it will be emailed to Susan White and she will respond back to you. And if you click on someone else, they will do the same, I bet. Or do you think they will, Susan? I'm sure that they will. <laughs> okay. Well, now I know our time is short and I'm so grateful that we have another time or two to continue to crack open willingness and what it means to us in our our journey of success. But for now, I want to thank you for your time and wisdom sharing, Susan. You're very welcome. Again, it was my pleasure. <laughs> oh, wow. And listeners, we appreciate you listening to the Brilliant Breakthroughs podcast, where you can learn how to create more brilliant breakthroughs for your small business. Shine brightly until next week when we come back again.